One of the things that has really intrigued me in the last couple of years is um, the possibility of a paperless classroom or the evolution of a paperless classroom. That type of thing doesn't happen overnight, but I challenge you to consider how could you use this great resource that we have in Moodle to increase the digital interaction with your students who really, um, this is what they know. This is what they've known since they were born, and it's probably a better way for them to engage and do some of their learning. So one of my favorite modules in Moodle to begin to think about that concept is the assignment module. That brings me to Monica's Grubbs class again because she's done a couple really interesting things. Um, I'm going to scroll down to her social studies unit or um, the one in the Hunger Games. I can't quite remember, but this might be a unit that she did um, with students that did not go to band and orchestra. I can't really remember, actually. But she did use the assignment module, which means that she was approaching this unit in a paperless, in a digital way. So, for example, if I click on assignment two, you'll notice to the left that there is a little icon with a hand with a piece of paper. That basically represents the assignment module, and so it's like a digital Dropbox or turning in an assignment digitally. So if I click on it, um, you will notice that you have the ability within the assignment module to post hot links. Um, so these each go to YouTube videos that she's asking the students to watch around um, issues related to human rights. And then at the bottom, what she did is that she posted an assignment. And she's telling the students that each question is worth five points for them. So if I were logged in as a student, I would have at the bottom of this page a button that I could click on that would open a text editing box for me to submit my answers to the questions above. And then as the teacher, what you do is you click on view the 21 submitted responses. And like I said that not all her students did this because some of them were music students. But what I would do is if you click on the last modified button, what that will do, actually if you click on it twice, is it will bring those submissions um, to the very top. Um, the latest submission being the very, very top one. So if you wanted to as a teacher, you could actually grade digitally. So, or you could give feedback individually. So if I click on the grade button, then I'm going to see the submission of the student. And then if I wanted to have a grading scale, I could. Um, you wouldn't have to. I'll show you the different scales in a moment. And then I could write in a few sentences of feedback. So how is it that she went about creating this digital assignment? Well, I'm going to go back using my um, breadcrumbs to her homepage. And I'm going to turn editing on. And I'm going to scroll down to that section. So within that section, you'd go under the Add an Activity menu. And what I want to do in this case is I want to create an assignment. And um, there's different types of assignments, which I'll cover later. But right now, we're focusing on those that would present the student with a editing box for them to enter text. So that's what I choose. And if you do that, your page will refresh and you'll have to fill in some fields. Let me show you what those fields are by going to the update button next to the one that I showed you in Monica's class. So this is what you see. Um, you're going to give your assignment a name and then this is where you post your content. So I just wanted to remind you that you have the ability using the editing toolbar to add images and you can do bulleted or numbered lists. You can justify and you have um, formatting for text as well as um, equation editors and, and different options for um, kind of laying out your page with tables and such. So the other thing you should note is that if you want to, this is a very small box to edit in, you always have the ability to click on this full screen button. And when I do that, my editing window enlarges, which makes it a lot easier 
to create a page with um, content in it. So I'm going to toggle away from that by clicking on it again so you can see the other options. In general, I, um, I don't put a check mark here. And you can enable the, the available from date. If you do, it will be hidden from students until that date um, arrives. Or if you put a due date in there and you happen to use the Moodle calendar, then it will appear on the Moodle calendar. You do not have to use those options if you do not want to. Um, I sort of usually default to yes for the late submissions because that way I don't have to go back and change it if I make an exception to somebody to allow them to turn something in late. Now in terms of grading, we don't use the Moodle gradebook. We use Infinite Campus. However, if you wanted to put a score on it, you totally could put a score on it. I just didn't want anybody to think that that would somehow automatically sync with Infinite Campus if you're in the secondary um, schools. So this is a pull-down menu with a number of points. But then you also have the ability to do a four-point scale and a satisfactory scale. So let's say you just wanted to give more of a descriptive type grade. Um, if you did the satisfactory scale, you'd have three options for grading the student. Outstanding, satisfactory, or unsatisfactory. There also is the ability to create your own scales in Moodle. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know. You, there's going to be a couple different ways for you to grade. Right now we have simple direct grading, which is um, just plain old regular grading, but you also will have the ability to do a rubric type grading and checklists. That will be a totally different lesson in this Moodle course. I almost always allow resubmitting because if you did, not, if you were not satisfied with somebody's response and you wanted to encourage them to work harder to their ability, this would be an easy way for them to get back into the assignment. And if you want to get an email alert if somebody submits an assignment, you turn in yes here. Now I do that with my Moodle-based classes, but you may not want to do that um, depending on how many students you have because it just may seem like major influx of email. Commenting in line means that you can um, comment right within the text that the student submitted. Um, otherwise, you would have a separate box where you could write a few comments. I don't really cover the group mode, and then you'd click Save and Return to the Course. So that is how you create an online text assignment in Moodle. And especially in the junior high with the um, increase in the iPads and as we get more digital devices and have greater access during the school day, I think that this is a great way to consider um, ways to become more paperless. And um, I think it, you'll find it uh, exciting for you as well whenever you have the opportunity to do this because there's just less piles around you and it really does help you to keep all of your submissions of your of your students in one place. Just a reminder that your students must be enrolled in your course in order to um, to complete an assignment and that tutorial for how to enroll students will be in the starting out on the right foot section of Moodle 2.0 reinvented um, when I get to it which will hopefully hopefully be soon.